It is my pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Kelly Peters. As many of you know, Kelly is the CEO and co-founder of BE Works. In her talk, Kelly's gonna explain how behavioral science can be used to help companies find purpose and realize the goals of stakeholder capitalism. She will highlight one of the biggest opportunities to realize the potential of stakeholder capitalism, and that's consumer behavior. Companies can change their products, innovate their process, and adopt UN sustainability goals, but when consumers change their behavior, the impact will be huge. Kelly's a world-renowned expert in behavioral science and is passionate about bringing scientific thinking to business strategy, marketing, and operations. She advises Fortune 500 leaders on how to drive innovation through behavioral insights and the application of scientific thinking to strategy. Her BE Works method has been fully and successfully implemented across a multitude of industries, including healthcare, financial services, media and publishing, utilities and government. And after Kelly's keynote, we sit down for a fireside chat. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us at BE Works Summit. This conference is all about shaping the future, about how we can address the challenges coming our way by harnessing the power of behavioral science. I chose this theme because we need to start making fundamental changes. We're facing substantial challenges right now, including climate change, starvation and malnourishment among some populations, while others grapple with industrial scale food waste. We're combating violence, not just from members within our society, but even from the police forces that are intended to protect us. We're grappling with a housing crisis where the dream of home ownership is out of the reach of most people. We're grappling with racial and gender inequality. Affordable and renewable energy is just a dream for many people. And this is probably not the last pandemic that's caused in part by an encroachment of humans into endangered habitats. I'm thinking broadly about shaping the future because many of the challenges we're dealing with will only grow more complex if we don't take action today. For over 50 years, companies have operated using the first principle of maximizing shareholder value. With this mandate, the focus is on profits and share prices. But for many of these years, it was easy to see the connection between a company and its impact on local communities. CEOs would routinely meet with their workers. They lived in the same communities. A company's suppliers and customers were all part of a visible ecosystem. A company was naturally held accountable for its impact on a community because it was a part of that very community. But with economies of scale, globalization, digitization, the connections between stakeholders has grown more and more distant. And in turn, the accountability has become weaker and weaker, while the drive to serve that bottom line has become stronger. And for business leaders, there is no incentive or mandate to prioritize those consequences to other stakeholders. An economist, Milton Friedman, rallied the sentiment with his philosophy that the business of business is business. But some leaders have been pushing back we're recognizing that in the relentless pursuit of the bottom line, we're actually hurting that very bottom line. Whether it was brand and reputational damage from consumers and employees who are concerned about those business practices, or dealing with the countervailing regulatory cost and efforts aimed at curbing or sometimes punishing that bottom line chasing behavior or it's even been the moral sentiments of leaders who want to practice business better and not be penalized for doing the right thing. And so two years ago, the Business Council Roundtable, the organization comprised of the CEOs of the world's largest companies, came together to reject shareholder capitalism and pledged instead to a broader, bolder mandate a new statement on the purpose of a corporation. It declares that the purpose of a company should benefit all stakeholders, not just financial stakeholders. While the impact of that radical declaration may have been overshadowed by the pandemic that immediately followed it, now is the time for us to turn inspiration into perspiration We've all agreed that these are the right things to do, 
but there's still so much to be done, not only in how we're going to measure progress, but the path we will take to achieve these goals. The answer lies in changes to business philosophy and methods, in innovative market solutions, as well as regulation and the law. But also, stakeholder capitalism will rely very heavily on behavioral change. And this is where behavioral economics comes in. While stakeholder capitalism can provide us with a North Star on what ought to be done, behavioral economics, with its insights on human nature, provides us with the strategies and the tools to drive behavior change. And many companies are doing it. We're working with Hellman's to reduce food waste. We're working with Georgia Pacific on improving worker safety. We're working with the leaders at Canadian Tire Financial Services to improve the call center experience and help people manage their debt better. We're working with leaders at IBM to improve the happiness and the productivity and the collaboration amongst employees. We're working with TD Insurance to make buying insurance an easier and better experience for customers. We're working with innovators at Sidewalk Labs trying to pioneer and re-engineer the very cities we live in. And we're working with the city of Charlotte to transform recruiting of police forces to build better, more trusted leaders within the police community. And last but not least, we're working with governments like that in Miramar to help protect democracy. When it comes to stakeholder capitalism, or more specifically sustainability, the biggest and most impactful moves may come from changing customer behavior. Unilever estimates that about 70% of the greenhouse gas footprint depends on which products customers choose and whether or not they dispose of them in a sustainable manner. So what are the barriers then that we face in driving behavioral change? Well, one is the say do gap. Let's think about our own behavior. We all say we want to be a part of change. But in a recent survey, 65% of us say that we want to buy purpose-driven brands that advocate sustainability. But the challenge is only about 26% of us do so. We all say we want to make sustainable choices. And yet, report after report, concludes that plant-based diets are a major opportunity for mitigating and adapting to climate change. And yet, how many of us have made the shift to vegan diets, or at least routinely eating less meat? A second challenge is self-perception. It's not just the gap between what we say and what we do that we need to confront. It's our own self-perceptions. In our research on reducing food waste, over 80% of households say that they are above average when it comes to minimizing food waste. As consumers, we don't even see that we're part of the problem. And another barrier is we have a self-serving view of our own behavior. We all believe we're making good environmental choices. But in our research on food waste, consumers who put their food into the compost bin consider that a net positive environmental behavior. And while it is marginally better than discarding it into general land waste garbage, the manufacturing, the distribution, the storage of that food all still contributes greatly to greenhouse gas emissions. It's very human for us to justify our own behavior. So how do we drive behavior change? It's not just as simple as labeling something green. For some businesses, the price of their products and services is going to have to increase. And we're gonna to have to get customer buy-in. How do we get people to pay more money for the same thing that they were getting before? How do we get people to change their preferences and their fundamental behaviors? We have challenges like customer not accepting the same volume of a product inside a box when companies are trying to decrease package waste. Companies are trying to reduce the overall weight of packages by using concentrated products and asking customers to merely add water. But then customers don't feel that the value is there. We have to overcome that misperception. There's slight inconvenience that might be introduced for 
things like introducing electric vehicles that require people to fundamentally change their behavior, and yet this is a way to radically reduce greenhouse gases. Or we have to confront our very identity. Something like vegan is seen as something uh, soft and effeminate, and some people resist the idea of becoming vegan because of their own identity. So how do we drive behavior change? It's about understanding the foundations of behavior. It's the science of learning about the heuristics and biases that govern our choices. It's about leveraging choice architecture, the nudges and boosts and cascades of interventions that can come together to help shape behavior. What else do leaders need to do to unlock stakeholder value? They need to embrace scientific thinking. That means we can help leaders move beyond the vague domain of morality and doing the right thing and instead ask questions like, how can we become a more purpose-driven organization? But instead of just getting stuck there, we can move beyond that to more concrete questions like, what specific behaviors do we need to change? How will we measure outcomes? What techniques of behavior change will be effective at turning intention into action? Leaders can stand on the shoulders of giants. You don't have to go it alone. There's a plethora of research on the psychology of decision-making and behavior that can help business leaders transform their products and services and lead to increases in stakeholder value. And last but not least, business leaders can embrace experimentation, a process of trial and error to discover what's working, what's effective at actually changing behavior. These are the nuts and bolts of making change happen. We need to take a close look at what choices we're making and what's keeping us from making those better choices and how we can make decisions that improve the world. That means we need to go beyond thinking about using nudges for simple marketing challenges. Instead, we can think about the ways in which behavioral insights can help us achieve something bigger than that, to construct the world we want to live in. We live in a complex ecosystem where we all play the roles of consumers, producers, members of communities, and leaders. Success means empowering ourselves to be the best versions of humanity we can be for all stakeholders. Because there's never been a better time for us to rethink what it means to be a good leader, to create a thriving society by applying the science of behavior change. Thank you. Thank you.